Good morning all. Uh, supercapacitors, how viable are they as a power source for projects? Take these uh, six 2.5 volt 700 farad uh, supercapacitors, which I'm going to use for my supercapacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project. Now I was going to use eight of these things and I did order eight, but two never turned up. But uh, I have been told, I think in the comments, um, that this thing gets pretty hot if you run it at its maximum voltage. So now I'm going to run it at a maximum of 15 volts, so that's 6 times 2.5 volts, and let it run all the way down to, well I think this drops out at about 6 volts, uh, judging by the tests, uh, of one very brief test that I did on it earlier. So these eight uh, 2.5 volt 630 farad supercapacitors I'm actually going to use for something different. I'm going to use them to build a supercapacitor powered stay um, 100 watt LED flashlight so that um, 8 times 2.5 volts is uh, 20 volts. And that'll have to be stepped up by a boost converter like this, although I may go for a bigger one and then I'll have not two but just one of these 100 watt LEDs using these as a power source. The issue I've got with these is that uh, as the 100 LED uh, consumes the energy in these supercapacitors that initial voltage of 20 volts will fall of course and um, it will fall to a point where this boost converter or whatever boost converter I use isn't going to be happy with the amount of input current because of course we've got a continuous sustained 100 watts on the output that's a fixed current and a fixed voltage the boost converter is going to be boosting up that initial 20 volts to about 34 I think it is for these 100 watt LEDs but as that voltage falls there's going to be uh, fewer volts and more current flowing into the input to maintain that output of 100 watts. Now I know that this thing will run from 12 volts on the input and can actually provide uh, 5 amps on the output. The question is how low can you go in terms of voltage on the input uh, because as the voltage as I say comes down the input current goes up at what point uh, will the input side of this circuit uh, be receiving too much current and it fails? Now we can do some quick mental arithmetic. Let's say that um, 100 watts, let's say that this boost converter is 100% efficient. So it's going to be 100 watts on the input as well as the output. It won't, it'll be a bit more on the input. But let's just say that for the moment to make the numbers easy. Uh, let's say these start, things start at 20 volts, uh, so for 100 watts that's 5 amps. Now when these capacitors drop down to 10 volts, we're going to require 10 amps on the input of this thing. And any lower than 10 volts on these capacitors, it's going to be more than 10 amps on the input of this boost converter. Now I may well use this boost converter, um, it's a bit chunkier, it's got quite a nice uh, heat sink on it to dissipate the heat from the uh, MOSFET and the diode inside there. And it's also got a fuse on the input, so it is protected against that current rising above. I think the fuse is uh, 15 amps in here. So at 10 volts, we'll be looking at uh, 10 amps on the input for 100 watts. More, of course, because of inefficiencies here. When this voltage gets down a bit lower, you can very easily do the maths, and we get up to 15 amps on the input, this fuse is going to blow. Now having a fuse blow, a 15 amp fuse at that, uh, on the boost converter as a sort of automatic shut off uh, to make sure that the uh, power source doesn't go too low in voltage is a bit impractical and I have got another idea for an automatic uh, overcurrent shut off. So I'm thinking that probably taking inefficiencies of the boost converter into account we can probably only use the voltage range from uh, 20 volts down to 10 volts of these supercapacitors. So does that mean that half the energy in the capacitors is just going to be wasted, not used? Well, half the voltage, yes, but not half the energy. 
because energy in a capacitor E equals half CV squared. The energy in a capacitor is related to the square of its voltage. So let's say that the capacitor here um, is going to be 2 farads. Uh, it's going to be a lot more than that. It's not going to be 630 because these are going to be in series. So it's going to be an eighth of 630. But let's say it's 2 farads just to make this really easy because if I've got 2 farads here, half of 2 is 1. So the energy in joules is simply the voltage squared. So for a 2 farad capacitor, uh, the energy in joules is simply V squared. So um, 100 joules, 100 joules at 10 volts, but at 20 volts, it's actually 400 joules, not twice the amount, but four times the amount. Now, since joules are watt seconds, um, 100 joules would run a 100 watt LED for one second. And this would, uh, at 20 volts, it would run, uh, draining these all the way down, of course, this means, uh, the LED would run for four seconds. So if we drain the voltage in these capacitors from 20 volts down to 10 volts, we actually drain the energy from 400 joules down to 100 joules. We use 300 joules of the uh, total 400 joules of energy. So we drain the voltage to a half, we actually get three quarters of the amount of energy contained in these capacitors. Uh, to look at this another way, let's look at some discharge curves. If you discharge a capacitor into a fixed resistance, you get this sort of curve. If you discharge a capacitor at a constant current, it's a straight line. And if you discharge a capacitor at a constant power, it's actually more like that. These graphs, of course, are voltage over time. Now let's do a quick calculation as to how long these particular capacitors will run a 100 watt LED. So these are 630 farads. I think they're 630. Yeah, 630 farads uh, divided by eight because we're going to put eight of them in a uh, series. So we've got about 80 farads. Um, now on these uh, ones here, when I went from 20 volts to 10 volts, we could extract 300 joules. That's uh, three seconds at 100 watts. So this is about 40 times bigger. So it's 40 times three is 120 seconds. Well, that's about two minutes, uh, these capacitors driving a 100 watt LED. So I think this is a, a viable project, a, a super capacitor powered 100 watt LED flashlight, but uh, we still do need something to prevent the input current uh, going over a certain amount and taking out the boost converter. And I think I've got just the thing. That. Cheerio.